Hey, Casper. Okay, so we've been uh, chatting for a very long time, um, but I finally have time to get to an actual video review for you. So we've we've gone over most of this, but I wanted to double back to your original list of five questions <clears throat> and go over what what you were asking about because you're you're spot on on some of it, and then some of it like the things that I usually tell people are wrong that you're doing seem to be working for you. So I wanted to clarify that. So your brace, your brace is good. It's like we talked about, it's kind of like an Eric Oakley style thing where there's this big aggressive cutoff. And like, there's things that maybe could be better about it, but that's, that's not the first thing I want to change. So let me go over what I do want to change. Um, and then we can, we can double back and look at making your brace different, but what you're doing I think is kind of, and I haven't studied these people very much, but you're doing more of an Eric Oakley thing or a Garrett Gerthy thing and not because you're setting down with this blade of the foot and not really rocking from toe to heel and because you have a big offset. So because like looking at the floor right? Because your rails are, there's a big difference here, a big space here. That's not bad. It's just one way of doing it. And then this leg is relatively straight. Uh, if you were doing more of a, a toe to heel thing, then you would see more of the knee dip in like you were talking about. And I think you showed me pictures of Eagle and, and Will, Will Schusterick. Um, yeah. So there's, 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 style things that you're doing differently that aren't what I usually coach on, but I don't want you to think those are bad. They're just different. Um, if they start causing problems and if in the process of us working together, we decide we do want to change that, that's fine. But we, your, your footwork doesn't need to change now. This being angled so far back is suspect, but your brace works. Like I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with your brace. Um, if you want a second opinion on that, I can ask some coaching friends if your motion is good. But so it's a little, it's also a little suspect that your balance is like this. But again, that might just be a function of, of the, the Eric Oakley and Gary Gerthy style. Um, so take a look at them and see if they have this same lean here or not. Um, but it's, it's working for you, so I don't think there's a huge problem. But uh, jumping into your first list of five questions that you sent me, you, you said your left hand is not the best. I would agree with that. Um, you're right. You're probably getting it too high, and you're probably getting it too far behind you. So let's take a look at that. <clears throat> so that's it. Like, excellent spine mobility. Like, and Eric Oakley does this too. So it may not be wrong. It may just be different. You know, a lot of people think Oakley is wrong, but he throws very well. So how can it be wrong? Um, but, but I do want you to understand what this contributes to. So because this is all the way back here and everything's so spread out, it's going to slow your shoulder rotation down. And I think your shoulders may actually be late, which is very uncommon. So because your arm is still behind you and it doesn't, your off arm doesn't ever get tucked in. It comes through and, and here it's flaring out and slowing you down even more. So that's, it's good kind of that your shoulders are not opening up too fast, but I don't think they're going fast enough in the beginning. And you're, uh, so we need to talk about layers because your, your, your footwork is fine and it's making your hips move in a way that's very productive, I think. There could maybe be more snap in your hips, but then the next layer is your shoulders, and I feel like your shoulders aren't adding enough extra on top of your hips, and then I feel like your throwing arm isn't adding enough extra on top of your shoulders. So there's three layers. Hips turning, generating power. Shoulders turning on top of the hips, adding more power, and then your arm Specifically, you're throwing elbow in the style that I teach, driving forward. 
Um, if you look at a different style of slingshot disc golf he teaches, he's really, really slinging the whole arm. So he doesn't think about driving the elbow forward. Um, so that's the difference between what he's teaching and what Chris Taylor advocates for, which is a, a deep, very active arm, deep pocket thing, which I think would help you a lot. Um, you could also try the slingshot thing. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a different style, just like the footwork. Like, uh, who knows which one is better. Um, once we actually get force plate data on pros, we can actually start comparing those things. But until that point, we are just shooting in the dark. So as long as the disc goes far and accurate, then we don't care which style you're using, right? Um, okay, so your next point. So left hand, not the best. Yes. Um, so let's the change we're going to make there is trying to get it tighter. So offhand tighter. Um, I'm going to make notes of these and then I'll demo them all at the end in the interest of time. Um, so your second point was your left knee is not rotating in. And let's see if that is accurate. And again, like this, yeah. So because your toe is so backwards, it's going to be hard for your left knee to rotate in, but it may not need to rotate. So you're already de-weighting the foot at that point, and the foot slips, which is maybe not good, but might not matter, because the leg is continuing to drift targetward, and then it does actually get to where, so your knee isn't pointing in, it's pointing down and back, but I think that's a function of how much space you have between your rails. So it's it's not necessarily a problem because this is sticking here and this is stopping right there so if we go back and look at the whole thing again so once your plant foot gets down there your hip doesn't move forward much more a little bit and then all of the motion is in your rear leg so your rear leg is going to continue to drift targetward into the rear and your front hip is going to come around. If I know how shapes work, let's see. Yep. So there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. And then when you max out that rotation, your heel takes more of the weight and your toe starts to drift forward. There's, there's nothing wrong there. That's, that's fine. Your brace is very effective as far as I'm concerned. Um, People with more experience might tell me I'm wrong. People who hate Eric Oakley's throw might tell me I'm wrong, but I don't see anything wrong with that. Your, your brace is stopping the front hip very effectively. We could make some tweaks to make the left hip rotation happen in a more productive way, but I, I, like, I think you're fine. I think the issues you're having are the shoulder rotation timing on top of what your hips are doing, and then the arm timing on top of that. Um, so let's jump into that. Your third question was your X step too far backwards. We've covered that. No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. If it is a problem later, we can readdress the footwork, but I think we're fine for now. Um, and then you talk about your off arm being too far back and too high. Yes. So that's the biggest thing to change. And then your fifth question was that, you know, you're not getting into a great power pocket and yes, that's accurate. Um, and that's a function of the shoulder rotation and that you're not driving your elbow enough. So let's see if I can make that a little clear. So the off arm gets so far behind you and so far spread out that it, it doesn't almost doesn't have time to get back where it wants to. And again, we should cross reference this with what Oakley actually does because I'm not very familiar with his throw. I just know it looks like yours. So here, the off arm is like you, you, you gather energy and pull it in, but you don't get it tight. So it's still making your shoulders go slow. And then there's also a little timing issue too. Cause so I'm just going to pause when you get to peak reach back pretty much right there. And your foot isn't even down yet. So we really want to see this peak reach back position happen. Not when you're not when your foot is floating, not when your toe is down, but when your heel is down. So as the toe smushes onto the ground, the disc should still be going backwards. And then when your heel drops and hits the ground, but, but again, this is like an Oakley thing that you don't really do a heel drop. You just set the whole foot down at the same time. 
So maybe that doesn't apply. Maybe it's just when you set the blade of your foot down, you want this to peak. So try and slow down the shoulder rotation backwards and try and slow down the rear extension or just have them start from farther away. So you could, yeah, you could add a pump. You have a little pump. You have a little pump. Elbow went forward a little bit. So try try that. Try adding more elbow pump. So we're going to adjust, adjust reach back timing with a pump, which I'm kind of telling everyone to do that these days. And some people don't like it, but I don't have a better way. So off arm, reach back timing, and then deeper pocket stuff. And I don't know if you've seen the deeper pocket drills yet, but that would be good. And off arm timing. Okay, so let's jump into all of those. Okay, so offhand tighter. Um, so you're getting like very good reach back, tons of rotation, but, and this, let's call this fine. Let's not worry about changing that because it's what your body wants to do. But what we're going to change is instead of bringing it in to here and having it come through like that, where it's, it's connected to the body, you're keeping it tight and it's coming through, but get it in and down. So you're reaching towards your right pocket. So we're going to kind of combine and I'll, I'll look at Oakley and get back to you. Check Oakley. Cause he may be doing something different, but you want to, you want to get that hand all the way in kind of in front. It's like you're going towards your right pocket. Um, yeah. So just, just try that. We won't get too nuanced about it, but what that's going to do is speed up your shoulders. So your hips are good. Your footwork is good. Don't change that. So your hips are going, but because this is so far out here, your hips go and then your arm kind of brings the shoulders in. So you want to get this arm inside and out of the way so that your shoulders, so your hips are on a 45, your shoulders are well past 90. They start at the same time. Um, from ball golf coaches, they start at the same time. I think our form is exactly the same. So your hips start rotating, your shoulders start rotating, but they don't rotate at the same rate. I can't even do that. They don't rotate. So you're not, you're not here when you finish with your shoulders still behind your hips, your shoulders, hips start on 45, shoulders start past 180. And as your sh hips start going, your shoulders catch up and actually pass to where your hips are a little bit angled past the target if I'm throwing directly that way. And your, your shoulders are closer to the target. Your shoulders end up at 10, like we were talking about, right? Your arm ends up at 10 when you release. Your shoulders end up about, your chest ends up about pointed at 10 when you release. But your hips aren't pointed at 10 yet. They're still at, you know, how does time work? 11-ish? No, other way, nine. <laughs> Is that right? No, your, your hips are kind of at 10 and your release is closer to 1030. I don't know. But your hips aren't straight. Your hips start stopping before your shoulders start stopping. That's a lot of words. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so offhand, just tighter. Just get it in because that will allow your shoulders and your hips to spin faster. Now, what's going to happen if you make that change and don't make any other changes is that your disc is back here. Your shoulder, your hips are going to spin. Your shoulders are going to spin faster. And then there's no power pocket and you're rounding and you've collapsed this space in your, basically your armpit, right? You want your armpit to stay open and you want space between your bicep and your pec in the front. So if the shoulders spin faster because you're gathering this arm better, and your arm doesn't go faster to make create space, then you're going to round and you're not going to have any power. So we also need to add a deeper pocket. 
So look at the trebuchet drill on my channel. Look at the deeper pocket drill on the channel. So trebuchet is just supporting your bicep here so that you cannot collapse this space. So you're thinking about a throw like this. This just trains your body to keep the elbow out and away and feel the arm gathering in on its own, not because you're bicep curling and pulling it in, but because you're driving the elbow forward and the hand flips in on its own. This is another thing that Slingshot Disc Golf got absolutely correct. In my opinion, some people don't like throwing that way. There are other ways to do it, but he has a bounce back here, which you're doing a little bit, which is good. A bounce, a coil, bounce coil, and then a snap, bounce coil snap. Um, so that's trebuchet drill. And then deeper pocket drill or the advanced trebuchet drill where you're pushing your shoulder forward gets you into a deeper pocket position. So if I come to the back, let the space open up and then nudge the arm forward, instead of ending up here in a 90-90 power pocket, I nudge to a deeper power pocket and then compress my extension my extension isn't happening from here to here. It's happening from here to here. So it's happening in less space, less time, but it's the same amount of distance, the same amount of degrees of rotation in my elbow. So that's going to put more spin, more speed, more snap on the disc. So those are the three things you need. Offhand tighter, a deeper pocket, and then the other one we didn't talk about yet was adjusting your reach back timing. So you have a little, a little pump when your X step comes forward, your elbow drifts up and forward a little bit. Exaggerate that a lot. <clears throat> so as my X step comes back, right, and this may be where your footwork starts to get weird because when you turn your toes backwards, it tends to turn your hips and your everything backwards because you want to align with that foot. So try it the way you're doing it. If it doesn't make sense, adjust your foot angle a little bit to where it's closer to 90. It doesn't have to be 90, but if you could get it like on a 45 instead of toes backwards, that might help. Play with it, see what works. But as your X step comes behind you, you want to counter rotate that elbow forward intentionally so that instead of my reach back starting from here where it gets too early and then I have to tip forward, you want, and this is the easy way to show it, is as the X step goes backwards, I wanna swing the disc forward so that I'm starting my reach back from here. I'm not starting my reach back from here because all of a sudden it's boom too early. If I start from here, then I have more time to get to my brace before peak reach back. So you don't have to do that with a big open pump. You can do it here. And now I'm gonna unwind my spine before I really start reaching back in the hopes that my foot can get to the ground before peak reach back. So the reason that's a problem is if I'm at peak reach back, then I have to tip forward and that's usually not ideal. Um, it can work for more of a girthy or Oakley style, but again, I would have to look at them and check their timing and see if they're actually different or not. Cause they're probably not. Cause once you set your reach back, then if you adjust your angle, you're not throwing where you thought you were throwing anymore. Um, so those are the big things that I see. So offhand tighter, um, deeper pocket, check out the drills on the channel for those deeper pocket drill, um, trebuchet drill. And then there's another video with a tag connecting concepts in front of it that kind of links those two together and gives a little more depth on them. So I would look at those and then play with adding a pump to make your reach back timing later. Um, but your brace looks really good. That's the most important thing. That's the hardest part to learn and the hardest part to teach. So I think changing the off arm to change the shoulder rotation and getting your throwing arm more, I want to say more active. Yeah, I mean, I guess more active into a deep pocket will help a lot more, but that active is a dangerous phrase. Um, and then an additional complication, you don't want to crack to 12. You still want to crack to 10. So I'm not sideways but still 10. Um, if that doesn't make sense, let me know. Spend some more time going over that. Um, but it's braces looking really good. Let's see if we can tune up the other stuff and go from there. All right. Thank you, sir.